Hi, my name is David Bales, product manager here at Pioneer Cycle Sports. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install your power meter onto your bike using our magnets for use as a pedaling monitor. questions we get is whether to use magnets or not in the installation of our power meter. In this video I'm going to show you how to install with magnets so that we can get all the advanced pedaling monitor metrics we provide like force vector display and efficiency. So before we get started we're going to want to gather the following tools. Now, first we're going to need a two millimeter hex wrench. Uh, we're going to have a five millimeter torque wrench. We've got another five millimeter hex just wrench. Just get things loosened up. Um, We've got our two magnets. Um, depending on whether you're doing a dual or a single leg system, uh, you're going to need one magnet for each leg. Uh, we also provide some spacers. Now we may or may not need these depending on the space we have on the frame, uh, between the frame and the, and the sensor on the crank arm. Uh, we also provide in the box a magnet template tool and this is going to help you place the magnets precisely where they need to be. Um, I put the nickel here because this is what we always use to remove our left battery cap and then the Shimano crank removal tool. Now that we have all our tools, we're ready to install the magnets. Now we provide a magnet template in the box with your sensors and we're going to use it to place over the bottom bracket at the center hole here and the magnet is, neat, is going to need to fit somewhere within this template guide. We like to have it right at the chain stay right about where I have it um, if we find out later that there's not enough room, we can move that anywhere around the frame of the bike to place it anywhere we want. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and place it here on the chain stay. Now a little trick I like to use is, now that I have my position, I'm going to temporarily affix it with some tape. The reason I'm doing that is I want to be sure that I have enough clearance when I put the crank on that I'm not hitting anything. Now we have the right side. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the left side. I'm just going to flip around. I'm going to find the location on the left side to place that magnet and temporarily affix it. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and install the crank set. All right, now we have the crank on the bike. We have our magnets temporarily affixed to the frame based on where our magnet template said they should be. Um, they're in my preferred location on the chain stay. Uh, so now I'm going to just turn the crank slowly, make sure that nothing's hitting anything. I want to make sure that the sensors aren't hitting the frame of the bike or the magnets. And I also want to make sure that the magnets are within 10 millimeters of each sensor. Uh, for proper triggering of the sensor as they pass. So on the right side that's usually no issue and in this case I've got three millimeters clearance lined up perfectly. Uh, there's going to be no issue with distance on the, on the drive side. And on the left side I'm right at it. Um, it looks like around 10 millimeters and that's where the spacer shims come in. And in this case I'm just going to try it to see if I can get a little closer. Oh, and that's really good. So I've got about a three millimeter clearance between the sensor and the magnet. And I think that's the setup that I'm going to want to use. So now I'm going to permanently affix the magnet on the bike. And my little tape trick is about over. I'm just going to grab the bottom of the magnet, let it fall back down into place, give it a good press, remove my temporary tape, double check one more time, I've got good clearance, and I'm good. I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. So then the final step is to be sure that 
the sensors are being triggered by the magnet. And to do that, we need to remove the batteries. So now that we have the magnets attached to the bike frame, nothing's hitting anything, everything's where it's supposed to be, we want to confirm that they are going to trigger the sensors. Now to do that, we want to remove the batteries from both, both crank arms. So on the drive side, our batteries are right behind our color cap here. So I'm just going to remove the battery, give it a second, go ahead and put the battery back in. Now standard out of the box, we should get a solid orange light saying that we're a dual amp plus power meter. And that's fine. Now we want to turn the crank slowly forward. And as the sensor, which is right behind the crank arm here, passes that magnet, we should get a green light. And There's our green light, slowly, green light. So we know the sensor is being triggered by the magnet. So now we're going to do the same thing to confirm the left side magnet is triggering the left side sensor. So I use a nickel to remove our battery, the best way to not strip the battery cap. We get our solid orange light. Confirms we're in dual amp plus mode. Now I'm going to just slowly turn the crank forward and as we pass that magnet we're going to get a green light confirming connection. And there we go. Green light. Yep, there's that green light. So very comfortable that magnet placement is good and I'm ready to move on to the control app to set up the system. Okay, cranks on the bike, magnets are permanently attached, uh, everything is connected and we've confirmed sensors and magnets are seeing each other. Um, our SBT series power meters do are Bluetooth so they will connect to our Cyclosphere control app. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Cyclosphere control. I'm going to spin the crank just a couple times to make sure it's awake. I'm going to add a new device. SGYPM930H is the dual leg system and an image of both left and right, so I'm going to select that. First thing it sees is the left leg and the ant ID confirms 004, so I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then the right, so we'll select that. All right, uh, we're connected. And for first time, it's a good idea, just go ahead and go to the wizard and let's get things set up. The first thing we're going to be C is a firmware update notification, and if there's new firmware, you'll, you'll have the opportunity to download those. In this case, firmware is up to date, so we're going to go next. Now here's where I'd like to connect this power meter to my cycle computer, but I want to change it to a pedaling monitor. So that's the mode switch. Um, so pedaling monitor option is here, and you can see the left leg is dual leg amp plus power. Um, so this is how it comes out of the box and again to connect to my cycle computer uh, as a pedaling monitor um, uh, a Pioneer SGX CA500, a Pioneer SGX CA600, uh, Wahoo Element and Wahoo Bolt computers um, can see this data so from pedaling monitor mode and this may take just a second Essentially, the system is turning on uh, three additional strain gauges per arm, as opposed to one per arm, which is where it is in ant, in the ant mode. Um, so now we're in pedaling mo monitor mode with switch. It's confirming. You can see the right leg's done, and now it's finishing up with the left leg. And mode switch is complete. 
Now the next step is, is one-time magnet calibration. Um, we've already manually detected that the magnets are, are, being, uh, are detecting the sensors. Uh, we can do that again in the app. We simply just turn the crank forward and the app will count up as the magnets, sensors pass the magnets. Uh, we'll just do four or five of those just to be sure we've got good connection. It looks like we're, we're in good shape here. We've got five. So we're going to go ahead and start calibration, which is now going to detect the magnets. Again, this is a one-time process. Once we have five of five for each leg, we've got a good sampling of where the magnets are on the frame and the system will be oriented correctly on the cycle computer screen. So we've got six of five, seven of five, more than enough. I'm going to go ahead and save that. We're done. So we go to next and the final step is zero calibration. And we can see if we have any, if we're off of the zero point with the tan and the rad numbers here. Now the right side's looking good, the left side looks good. You can zero calibrate anyway, never hurts. Success, success. And we're done. We're now a pedaling monitor system on the bike, ready to pair up to a uh, Pioneer or Wahoo cycle computer. All right, so we've mode switched our power meter into a pedaling monitor. So we're now ready to pair it up to our uh, CA600. So to do that, I've gone to the CA600. I go to cycle computer settings. I go to sensor. Add a sensor, pedaling monitor left and pedaling monitor right are selected. Add sensors, and they're there. We're now connected to the CA600 as a pedaling monitor, ready to ride.